frog when he caught and he did ride Crambo. Yes, I'm only a bill. Green Acres is the place to be. And that Circle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Here we come. Walk down the street. <laughs> Who is on first? Why are you asking me for? I don't know. Now, wait a minute. I'm, not I'm on. asking you who's on first. That's his name. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. That's it. <laughs> That's his name. Well, you ain't said that. I ain't asked you nothing. You did. You know the guy's name on first base? Sure. Go ahead and tell me the guy's name on first base. Who? SWJ, if you please. Sir Walter Joe. Who that? Who that? Sir Walter Joe. Oh, yeah. Sir Walter Joe. Hello, come on. Sir Walter Joe. Put some hands up. Sir Walter Joe. Hey, you know that. Sir Walter Joe. Who are we listening to? The Sir Walter Jones Show. Yeah, I know, I know that's, that's right. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show with co host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show that tackles the hot topics in a believer's walk. Get in on the conversation now by calling 773-675-5906. Sir Walter Jones. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sir Walter Jones. Come on, everybody. Sir Walter Jones. Let's do it one time. Sir Walter Jones. Ladies. Sir Walter Jones. Fellas. Sir Walter Jones. We're listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show. Yeah, I know that's right. It's Fireside Friday. Sit back, relax, grab some tea and crumpets, and let's talk about the current events of the week. Right here on the Sir Walter Jones Show. Friday. 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 Everybody, Sir Walter, the Sir Walter Jones Show. I am Heat. It's Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday, Friday. Friday. Mm-hmm. Sitting around the mic and talk to you about some things that's going on in America. But today, today's a different day. Today we're talking about love, love, and more love. Mm-hmm. Not love affairs per se, although the affairs of love should be that which is appropriate <laughs> in the eyes of uh, God and the rest of us. But we're talking about Arrow's love. Why Arrow's love? And why is Arrow's love so important to us? There are different types of loves, and we're going to talk about it today. Right here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very exciting show. I got some guests who are coming in. And we are going to take you to a place that a lot of you Christians usually uh, don't go in a 
professional setting. A lot of your pastors and leaders don't talk about this because it's taboo, just like mental illness, just like homosexuality and all these other things. Taboo, taboo, taboo. And many of your marriages and many, many of your relationships, whether you're engaged, uh, whether you are seeing someone, he's your boyfriend, your boo, uh, your main squeeze, your bae, <laughs> And uh, all these terms that y'all will come up with down through the years, going steady, uh, and all of the intimate words that we can come up with. And the church is not talking about it uh, because a lot of times what happens is a lot of your leaders are in leadership. They don't really give to their spouses what they used to give to them when they first said, I do. Or well, before I do, because there are things you can do before marriage, believe it or not. Uh, I don't have a problem with people touching. If you don't know how to control yourself, yeah, that might be a problem for some of you. Uh, but for others, I like to hold hands with somebody I'm in love with. And I'll kiss, too. I know back in the day they told y'all you, you shouldn't do that because that get other stuff flowing. Mm, you know what? You, again, if you can't control it, stay out the kitchen. Uh, but shaking, uh, holding hands, I said shaking hands. Holding hands, kissing, uh, arm to arm, walking down the street. I like taking walks in the park, you know, uh, and uh, looking at the moon and uh, the stars and going for a picnic. Just the two of you. Some of the most precious and most intimate and most romantic things are done uh, between couples who don't spend any money. They go in the refrigerator. And uh, they pull out food and they cook it in their own homes and then they pack it in a bag or in a basket and go out. And sometimes they go to the backyard if you got a nice backyard and uh, you sit in the grass and you eat and uh, you you uh, look at the, the stars or you go to the park or somewhere. It doesn't take a lot of money to be romantic. It doesn't take any money, actually. Uh, some of the most romantic things I've heard people say, especially women say that I had with my man. It wasn't the millions of dollars he spent on that ring. It wasn't the trip to Cancun or Jamaica. No, it was when he just sat on the couch and talked to me and, uh, and talked about all of his dreams and aspirations and things that we used to do. It's always a we used to do type of story when you're talking to couples about love. And so we go to church and bombard our pastors and leaders about why he won't do this anymore and he won't do that anymore. And the pastors will pre present to you a lot of time religious banter, uh, a lot of spiritual church cliches. It's a church culture. And we use these terms. Uh, but uh, a lot of times your pastor go home to a house divided he gets in the car and he and his wife will not speak to each other. They won't say they won't say a word to each other. No, matter of fact, they drive two separate cars, okay? And then they go to the house and he lives in the on the down portion, the below portion, the man cave, and she lives upstairs. And at nighttime, they go sleep in separate beds. Uh, but Sunday morning, you would think, wow, man, they, you know, he talk about how wonderful his wife is, but he never expresses that Monday through Saturday because the house is divided. And that's not all your pastors. There are several, you know, me, my pastor and wife, are, they're very lovey-dovey, okay? I look at my mom and my father, who, as old as they are, uh, come home, and they sit on the couch together. You know, she sit on his lap, and they, they kiss, and they watch television together. They eat together. They go on trips together, all right? He don't send her away, and she send him. No, they go on trips, exotic, wonderful trips at, at their age. And I love that, and it it is uh, something that we all should cater our lives after if we want to, you know, really have a long-lasting relationship. And then my parents tell me all the time, tell us all the time, that they've they grown love to love each other more now than they did when they first had those first few years together. What happened to us? And uh, what happened to the love? Where is love? <laughs> Was that Roberta Flagg? Yeah, uh, and we look in the Bible uh, in 1 Corinthians, uh, I think chapter 13 is the love chapter, the way of love. If I speak in tongues of men of, and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, 
but have not love, I'm nothing. And if I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned and have not love, I gain nothing. And if those of you who are in King James Version, you'll see the word uh, love or, or charity and what have you. But it says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, and it believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, which y'all speaking, mm -hmm, they will eventually cease. As for knowledge, it also will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in only in part, y'all. But when the perfect comes, the partial, it'll pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. And I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Oh, but when I became a man. I gave up childish ways for now we see in a mirror kind of dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith and then there's hope and then love abide. Now check out these three things, y'all. The greatest of these still is love. And that is something that the world needs today. And not just the world, but the church, because the church is looking, the world is looking at us. So we want to focus on, on, on arrows, but I want to bring out some other ones that uh, you guys uh, know about. Uh, we're going to talk about it. The Greek language distinguishes at least, um, let's see, four different ways. There's more, but I'm bring out four or more. As to how the word love is used. Ancient Greek has four distinct words for love. All right. Agape. Let's talk about agape. It means it, it's a brotherly love, pretty much. Charity. It's the love of God for man and man for God. Agape is used in ancient tense, a text to denote feelings for one's children and the feelings for a spouse and it was also used to refer to a love feast. Mm -hmm. Agape is used by Christians to express the unconditional love of God for his children. And this type of love was further explained by Thomas Aquinas as to will the good of another. Agape is a wonderful word. How many of us have it? I'm not sure. Uh, it is, the, it is the most radical among the Greeks, this agape. Um, uh, it was selfish love. This was a love that you extended to all people, whether family members or distant strangers. And agape was later translated into Latin as caritas, which is the original or the original origin of the word charity. You got it? Mm -hmm. Now, C.S. Lewis, we know him, preacher extraordinaire back in the day, referred to as the gift God or the gift love, the highest form of Christian love. But it also appears in other religious traditions, such as the ideas of meta or universal loving kindness. Mm -hmm. And that's that's those Buddhism people. Mm -hmm. There is um growing evidence that agape is in a dangerous decline in many countries. And uh, empathy levels in the United States have declined sharply over the past 40 years. With the steepest fall occurring in the past decade, we urgently need to revive our capacity to care about strangers. What, have, what happened to us in the agape love? It's supposed to be God's unconditional love. Yes, for us, and he never changes. Unfortunately, we change. And I look at politics and the absence of agape in this whole situation here. Mm -hmm. It is uh, a shame to be in that house called white <laughs> and uh, the, the dome uh, called the Capitol building down there. And that house where all of the people sit and they call themselves Mr. Congressman and Mrs. Representative. Uh -huh. The division the among them is just amazing. Those who are running for office 
you see the division among them. One governor over there, over east, Christy, I believe his name was, got attacked by Mother Nature. And the president of the United States, just so happened to be of the other party, came, flew in town to see and assess the damage. And they were found shaking hands. And Christie's party got upset because he was shaking the hand of the enemy. Right here in America, the so-called United States of America. That is a lie. We need to change our names. We are the un United or the divided states of America. We're very, very much uh, divided. Paul Rogers is saying, love, question mark, uh, when and why was arrows made synonymous with love? God loves us all, but has not arrows for none of us or none of us, he's saying here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, hey, you you sit here and let the, the, the new lady sit here because she ain't been here before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going there. My guests walked in, and they're looking pretty, and uh, we're about to go there. But but now that's a copy, okay? And then we'll go to the next one, which is um, affilia, okay, which means affectionate regard or friendship, usually between equals, and it is a dispassionate, virtuous love, a concept developed by uh, Aristotle. You all know his name. And Brittany helped him out with them, them headphones, if you can. Uh, in his best known work of, on ethics, uh, Nicomachean ethics, they call it. Philia is expressed variously as loyalty to friends, family, and community, and requires virtue, uh, equality, and familiarity. Furthermore, in the same text, philos denotes a general type of love used to love between families and uh, between friends, a desire or enjoyment of an activity as well as between lovers. Philia. And that's really where we get the word petophilia, <laughs> which is a problem. Uh, and it, it is a deep friendship. So this here is a Greek situation as well. It con this concept, uh, comradely friendship that developed between brothers in arms who had fought side by side in the battlefield. And it was about showing loyalty to friendship, sacrificing for them. And so we can all ask ourselves how much of this comrade philia we have in our lives. It's an important question in an age when we attempt to amass friendship on Facebook or followers on Twitter. Achievements that would have hardly impressed the Greeks. <laughs> Where's the philia in our lives? I have here two wonderful guests. One I've known for a long time, too long for me to even remember. Mm hmm Long, long time. She's old and I'm well I'm catching up. No. Mm hmm wow. mm hmm The great uh Wakisha. Uh now okay, now which name you gonna wear now? You 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 Tyson today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the great Wakisha Tyson. How you doing, sweetie? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. What's going on? Oh, nothing much. Just fighting that Chicago traffic to get here. I know, ain't that something? Thank you for being so patient. Oh, come on, the the the, the ship got to keep sailing. What? I know mm -hmm. you. I, you are. Hmm? What? You're Say. handy uh, at <laughs> navigating. <this ship. laughs> that's good. That's good. I'm gonna pay you after this, right? All right. Uh huh. Uh, and um, our new guest here, and I'm looking at some of her work. Uh, it, it is amazing, and we're going to talk about some of her work as we continue to go on. Uh, and I believe it's Brandy. Uh, yes. Now is it McCord? Yes, Brandy McCord. Brandy McCord. How are yes. you, Sid? I am wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much for. Like, oh, I'm excited. oh, I am too. This is going to be great. It's going to be great. Okay. Yes. To put, we didn't put seatbelts in these chairs, but you may have put okay. them on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now pull that mic to your mouth like I do here. Uh huh. Because uh, you're about to go there. Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. going to turn you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We talked about agape love before you got here. Yes. Unconditional. Yes. All right. Yes. Help me out with that. Okay, I'll start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, agape is the all-encompassing, the the spiritual, the the God love. You know, the love that we're supposed to love our fellow man with. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's it that is the love. That's the love that you always hear about you do. in ministry, in you church, do. and we should hear more about it in the world. Um, yeah, we should. We should love hear it. more about it mm -hmm. in the world. That's the love that everybody knows. Yeah, they all know about it. That's they all know about uh -huh, it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So familiar. It's, it's like walking, chewing gum. It's just something that you do. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Well, then this the other one here is um it's 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 spelled S T O R G E, right? Storage. So it's mm-hmm. not storage. So well, we thought it, it was that, but it's uh it's actually storage. 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 So storage. Storage. I yeah. like that. A lot. You like that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, storage. Mm-hmm. I had to I go like on Google and hit that uh, that Pronounce. pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it. storage. Translate. Storage. Yeah. <laughs> storage. Uh huh. Because there's a dash at the end of the e. Okay, okay. Uh, means love, affection, mm-hmm. and especially of parents and children. Uh, it's the common uh, or neutral empathy, like that felt by parents for offsprings. Rarely used in ancient works, it's saying, and then almost exclusively as a descriptor of relationships within the family. And is also known to express more acceptance or putting up with situations, as in loving the tyrant, they're saying here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Greek website that I went to to, to see if they were going to bring that up, uh, let's see, uh, they they did not, um, because, again, it does, it's not used that much. Mm-hmm. All right? So, That's the platonic. That's mm-hmm. more the platonic. Right? Absolutely. Yes. So we did, so agape, uh, uh, storige, we got philia, and now they got other ones I'm not going to talk about, but it's a ludus, which is a playful love, mm-hmm. okay? Pragma, or long, a long-standing love. Uh, Felosia, or love of the self. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, but this Eros love. Uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> Eros love. We got to do it. Uh-oh. Do it. I mean, y'all, y'all here for this. <laughs> this. This is, this is, I mean, you know, it was a wonderful segue, you mm-hmm. know, and so what we're doing. See, we... Mm-hmm. We, I enjoyed it. Come on now. We we you like we eased us in. Come on yes, now. We, we set our guests up and we don't play. Uh-huh. Um Arrows it. is it's it's uh, uh now there's two sites I'm gonna weed from so that so we can get a whole paramount picture of it, okay? Uh now the Greek site saying the first kind of love was Eros, named after the Greek god of fertility. And it is represented uh the idea of sexual passion and desire. But the Greeks didn't always think of it uh, as something positive, as right. we tend to do today, they're saying. In fact, Eros was viewed as dangerous, fiery, and irrational form of love that Uncontrol. could take hold of you and possess you. An attitude shared by many later spiritual thinkers, uh, such as uh, C.S. Lewis. Eros involved the loss of control yes. that frightened the Greeks, which is odd because losing control is precisely what many people now seek in a relationship. Yes, yes. they do. There's yes. a don't we yes. hope to fall madly, madly. in love. Head over Madly's heels. Really Head. Deeply in love. <laughs> <laughs> Head over heels. Help us out, girl. Help us out with that. You got the mic. Okay, well, I'm going to... Yeah, put your clothes to your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> let me... Eros is the love that we're, we're... Now, let me say, I am from a ministry background. I was born, birthed, bred you know, in ministry and Eros is the love that, you know, it, it hasn't been, uh, the agape love is the the one that we always wanted, needed to know about. Yep. Um, don't worry about that Eros. That's not something that you mess with. Yep. That's not the love that you want to focus on. Yep. Um, and, and I was raised with that mindset. Me too. Um, a lot of us were raised into that mindset. Mm-hmm. A lot of us were, you know, brought into our marriages mm-hmm. with that mindset. Sure. Were. And I don't want to say, what's correct or incorrect Mm -hmm. but that's 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 counterproductive to Mm -hmm. go into your marriage thinking that eros is bad that passion is bad that that uncontrollable love is bad now you've sat up here and pledged your love and life the rest of your life to this person that Mm -hmm. god has brought you Mm -hmm. but by all means, keep your control. Don't, yes. Don't, don't, that passion, no, right. you don't need all that. All you need is that agape love. Mm-hmm. Negative. Negative. When you're in a marriage, you need some of that arrows. Um, I'm going to stop right there. No, don't stop. stop. <laughs> don't stop that's the problem that's that, that, you know, most marriages, and especially in ministry, mm-hmm. face. Because they don't want to dig deep into that. that. I said that. Marquisha and said I don't that. mind saying <laughs> that. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Uh, I remember my pastor sitting us down, uh, a bunch of the adults, okay? He says, we're going to talk about sex today. And a lot of the older ones like, oh, no, we're mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Not in front of the mm-hmm. He says, why? See, that's what your problem is. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's oh why your God. marriages are miserable. Yep. Oh, my God. He says, matter of fact, I'm going to teach y'all about oral sex. Oh, no. What? My pastor did that. What? Yes, he did. Church of God in Christ. <laughs> sure did. Wow. And they fainted. 
<laughs> but then wake back up and hear that message. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. Some of them had to walk out, and others stay because they wow. want to know. Okay, mm-hmm. they want to know. Okay, now he says, "I it, it, it's up to your conviction mm-hmm. whether you feel it's right or where it's whether it's wrong." Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the church has been taught that oral mm-hmm. is wrong. Mm-hmm. You're going to hell. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, they told they also told you. Uh, some faith believe that they want to, again, I uh, told the kids to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. All right. So they're not, they're not listening. Mm-hmm. But other churches told you <laughs> that only the, uh, the man is supposed to be on top. The woman should never be See? on top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my fact, and they said as a demonic, uh, position that the oh woman's on top. God. Oh, absolutely. And these marriages are a mess. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of the women, walk out on these brothers and go next door because the other brother he gonna show oh oh he ain't doing that for you right. or oh, let me help you out yeah. please god let me just uh-huh. say something let me uh-huh. just <laughs> let me just say something you better say it um i i can't tell you how many scriptures i have been um, <coughs> quoted about uh, that distinctly say supposedly that oral sex is wrong and that you're is it, you will go to hell if you have oral sex um if you um Anything but missionary, you're going to hell. Now, people have brought me scriptures. Now, the scriptures had would, absolutely nothing to do with I would love to see what, those scriptures. Listen, no, you won't, because it'll make you laugh. It'll make you laugh. <laughs> but, enough. but the Bible is conspicuously <coughs> silent about yeah. what we do and what a man and a woman and a husband and wife does in their bedroom. He yeah. steps back from that. He, he, but good. you're going to tell me what to do with my husband? Mm, I mm. had, and I don't know... I, I I, you know, I'm passionate about this, but I had a conversation with a couple of older women. I really, really expected, uh, respected them and still do to this day, but they were telling me, showing me scriptures and they were telling me how I don't, I forget how we got into the conversation. One of the other young, young ladies free. She's free. I love her. I'm not going to say her name, but she's free. She, she just talks about it. And that's what it is. You know, I'm saved. I love God. I know my relationship with God. I'm gonna let him tell me what I do. But she was talking about it and they were just appalled, um, appalled. And, um, this, they brought out, the lady brought out these scriptures about, um, how oral sex is wrong. And I'm, I'm trying to be respectful and trying to see the connection. And I said, well, how do you know he wasn't talking about this? Mm-hmm. How do you know um, that it's an abomination? How do you get to decide what an abomination is? I said, furthermore, I'm happily married. Mm-hmm. My husband loves what we do in the yes. bedroom. Yes. So you mean to tell me I'm going to sit up here and let you, who has never been married, <laughs> and, and if you had, it wouldn't make any difference, <laughs> like but I'm trying to make it a make point. A difference, right? you, you're trying to tell me what to do with my husband? Yeah. You're going to mess some stuff up. You're going to mess don't some do stuff that. up. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, the Bible is very specific about uh, <laughs> being uh, <laughs> I hear you, Quikisha. <laughs> The bed is definitely undefiled, undefiled. okay, undefiled. I, and that's 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 between you and your wife. Whatever you you decide to do with each other, mm-hmm. now ex- except there be some abuse, yeah, okay, because yeah. there's Animals, abuse and yeah, like and all that, that yeah. stuff. Don't do that. Uh, don't do anything that make her feel uncomfortable because you, that's your body and hers. Yeah. Her body is yours and yours is hers, right. and that's on and right. on. <laughs> okay, so whatever abuse you do to her body, you're doing it yourself. So, that's yeah. right. Uh, but if you both are pleased at what you're doing, yes. Close the door and leave me out yes. of it, okay? <laughs> and let God judge it. Um, but there are some things that we want to talk about in this next half hour. We're going there because we, we've got a, a show that's coming up next week. I think it's Thursday. Is that's it Thursday? Right. Okay, yes, yeah, Thursday yeah. Night. We'll talk that's about night. this in this next half hour. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, boy! And I put some pictures up there on Facebook for those of y'all who saw some of the, the shots there. We're going to hear uh, a Christopher Cross right quick. A song that I love so dearly, it's called Sailing. One of my favorite songs of all time. Sailing. Written in, in, uh, by that guy, Chris. <laughs> Chris Cross. <laughs> so roll the Jones show.
have never been reason to pretend If the wind is right, you can find the joy of innocence again Oh, the cans can do miracles Just you wait and see Sailing, a great song. A song written and recorded by American uh, artist Christopher Cross. It was released in 1980. Uh, while Keisha was just a baby, um, and <laughs> as the second <laughs> single from the eponymous debut album, the song was a success in the USA, uh, winning Grammy Awards for the Record of the Year, Song of the Year, Arrangement of the Year, helping Cross with the Best New Artist Award. And VH1 named this the greatest uh, soft station, soft rock music song of all wow. time. Wow. Yes, now that's I'm telling you. Now I, I heard him talk about it. He said he was on a he was on a ship. He was on a sailboat actually, and he said the the wind was blowing the right way, and the stars was just right. <laughs> hmm. The sun and the moon was out that day, <laughs> and, and he just heard that tune rolling wow. around in his head. Wow. He says that I hear this song. I have to write it, and when they sailed, when they landed, uh, um, he went straight to the piano. Look how he was inspired. Yeah. That yeah. is amazing. Mm-hmm. It turned out to mm-hmm. be one of the greatest yeah, songs. Greatest songs. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. And I, I love those stories. I really do. I do too. Um, and and, and uh, since we're on this vein, we, we're gonna we're gonna go there because we're talking about arrows, and there's something about songs that uh, really inspire us. Uh-huh. Why uh-huh. do you think, Brandy? Why do you are, now? Are you a songwriter, by the way? No. No, you're not a songwriter. No, I okay. listen, but I can't do anything without music. Really, I can't do. Why is that? Anything. Tell me why. Mm, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm an artist. You I'm are. Sorry. Yeah, see, say I'm, I'm trying to help her with this radio. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm an Turn artist. Turn up. Uh, um, yeah. Uh-huh, go ahead. I'm an artist. Yeah, Ooh, that's, good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, we talking. I'm an artist, mm-hmm. um, and I I create by what I feel. Okay. 
um, that's not as that's not great business wise, and that's why I got a team because I you know <laughs> Good. I, you know Good. but I I move and I create by what I feel Me so. I can't really do anything or create anything mm-hmm. without uh, music behind me. I, I can't create arrows without music. The women supply wow. me with music. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's good stuff. Are you a poet or something? Do you do you do poetry? Oh. You have a you have a bass in your voice. Has anybody ever <laughs> told my, you that? I have a man voice. You, yes. I, yeah, I yeah. have a man voice. Yeah, you, have you, you have a Maya Angelou <laughs> type voice. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if you do any public speaking or what have you, but that's no, definitely a, really. a plus plus one. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um hey, hey uh Wakisha. Yes, sir. Uh music, how important is that to you? Um that's all I do is listen to yeah. music every morning. Okay. My walk to work, mm-hmm. even when I'm sitting at my desk, supposed to be answering the phone, sure. so I have my earbuds in. Yeah. Because that fuels me. Okay. And it fills me. Yeah. Um, and I listen to my choice of music, mm-hmm. jazz, um, neo soul, R and B, the old school R and B, not this new school mm-hmm. stuff. I don't get. And um, you know, of course, gospel mm-hmm. because that that's my inspiration. Absolutely. So I have to have music. There's no that doesn't mean anything to me if there's no music behind it. Sure, absolutely. Go to A, Brittany. I want to see if y'all recognize some of these here when you hear the first couple notes. Okay, <laughs> that sounds like fun. Uh huh. And see if uh, if this uh, brings you to a place. Hey, yes. See, you heard what she said? Yes. Hey. Now tell me why you say hey. Two reasons. Tell me why. That was one of the songs that Steve Harvey did in the Kings of Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> By far my favorite show. Yeah, it is very. Favorite, mm-hmm. favorite of all time. But Now we, very... we have volumes here as well. If it's too loud or not loud mm, enough, you I'm get good. it. Okay, good. He, in this uh-huh. song, he's just very passionate about the woman that he's singing about. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Period. And, and he, it doesn't even matter how in, in some generations... They they may hear it and say he sounds crazy or yeah. he's mm-hmm. stuttering. No, he mm-hmm. is passionate and passionately in love yeah. with this woman, and that'll make you stutter. Sometimes. Man, stutter. <laughs> there, there's will reasons stutter. for stuttering. But there is yeah. a reason for stuttering. That is so true. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, one of my favorite songs. Yeah, of all time. Lenny Williams, uh, yes. 1978. Hey, what would you do in 1978, uh, Brent? Three years old. <laughs> <laughs> You're just know. a baby. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, he's an American a singer songwriter uh, known for his R and B and soulful j- genre, and he was the lead vocalist for Tower of Power. Okay, he, he uh, made several hits, uh, including this one here. But let's go to B, uh, Brittany. Okay, first couple uh, words, and then you in. I'm sure. Let's see. Let it be. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, her finger is popping already. Mm. Why is your finger popping? Huh? What's going on? You gotta understand. Yeah, I have to understand. There again, uh-huh. meaning in this song. Yeah. And Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's that's my birth month. First. That's your month. birth month. You already know Earth, Wind, and Fire is yeah. all November. Oh, that's Sagittarius. true. Sagittarius. You know, uh-huh. they they were created just for me <laughs> to sing to me. They were singing to me. Yes, yeah, every song they wrote was they about were me. So honest. Oh then. my God, <laughs> it was so you. honest. That's yeah. why it still touches us now. Yeah, there was no Super agenda. Super they just sang good. what yes, they did. you know. Yeah. Put your manhood aside and just sang. Yes. Cry. Yes. Get on your knees and wow. tight hands you know, on. It was real. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Real. You notice what she said? She said, "Put your manhood aside yeah. and go ahead and just cry." Just cry. Yeah. And that's, I heard women say that when men are not emotional, but that's a lie. Listen to their songs that they write. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they are very everything. emotional. They put everything. I mean, you see how Lenny stuff. Williams was crying? Yeah. Like, oh, 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 ah, ah. <laughs> he meant that thing. They're going to be at my next wedding scene. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I believe that. Okay, now these are, these are the men. Let's talk about the women, though. Go to see, Britt. One of them, I think one of the greatest song, um, love song singers of our time. Yes. Uh-oh. Love her. Yeah. Yes. Who is mm. Anita? Anita? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because oh, she's singing about an angel. Yeah. Now and we, and uh, Layla Hathaway came behind. She did. And, she did. And, and did it. She oh. really. Yeah. Just, just, yes. just, just killed it. Oh, yeah. She's here now. Actually, she was on WGN. I know. I saw it this morning. <laughs> ah. Okay. Now this song, 1983. Yes. All right. Yes. The song was the second single release from her debut yes. album, The Songstress, and uh, it was a huge hit. Okay, what are you feeling, uh, Brad? What's going on? You know, I can't say everything, but I, I, I will yeah, you say can. this. Yes, you um, can. I can't. <laughs> on this show, you can. My can't. mom is listening. <laughs> but Anita had a 
you know, there are certain praise songs that take you straight there. That's right. There's nothing, nothing in between. It knocks you straight on your knees. Right. Anita had the power. She did. Anita had an anointing yes. to take you right there. You didn't even know you wanted to go there, but she you didn't took know you, you right wanted. there. <laughs> you and she didn't struggle. It wasn't hard. She's not yelling and screaming. She's no. just, she's just flat my foot God. standing there. Yeah. And hanging. Yeah. She ain't got to holler at you. No. She ain't got to holler at you. I won't name no names of people who holler. I'm not. We're thinking of the same people. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are the same people. Okay. All right, Brett. We'll go back to the music in a minute. Okay. And then what happened was you, Brandy, you decided, I don't know when it did start, that you were, you began to launch something for people uh, to express who they are. Yeah. Okay. Because... You know, they said some about words, uh, pictures, I mean, uh, it says a thousand words. Is that uh-huh. the, the phrase? Okay. Mm-hmm. Why did you move into this uh, area of your life? Why did I move? Um, well, I'm going to be honest. Um, again, I grew up in ministry. Right. Um, I grew up in ministry um, and a lot of things were fine and I took them at face value. I love ministry and there's no other way I would have wanted to be raised. Honestly, I can't think of another way. I probably wouldn't be here if I wasn't brought in under ministry. But as I got a little bit older, I saw that some things were lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm looking, when I get to the point where I'm dating and I'm thinking about um, finding a husband or letting my husband find his good thing, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I started to watch a lot of the couples, older, younger. um, I started to watch them. Hmm. And and their interactions. You know, when you're in ministry and you're dedicated, you're dedicated. Yes. You are working. You mm-hmm. got work. Mm-hmm. You got kids. You got ministry. Mm-hmm. And that's you don't have time right. for anything else. Right. So I was noticing that, you know, the couples that were there, you know, it's a beautiful thing to have two people who are just as dedicated to, to ministry and, and to the Lord. Right. Um, that's a beautiful thing. But right. what's left after? I used to sit and wonder, uh, what, are, what are y'all, not not in a perverted way, but no. what are y'all, how do y'all, right. how does that work when you get home? How does, mm-hmm. It work? Mm-hmm. how does it work when you get home? And yeah. I, I noticed, I started seeing some things um, with some of the men. And I used to be like, this wouldn't be happening mm-hmm. if things were okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I just decided that, um, I saw my mom was one of those people. She had owned her own business, mm-hmm. successful business, mm-hmm. die hard in ministry, um, working, had mm-hmm. four kids. Mm-hmm. So what do you have left when you come home? Right. Mm-hmm. What do you have for your husband? That husband, that wonderful blessing that you've been praying for mm-hmm. all your life. Mm-hmm. You come home to him and you don't have anything left. Wow. And that's just who we are. We're, we're busy and that's not your fault, but I wanted to get, give us an, an, an outlet, a way to express and encapsulize our beauty and the fact that we are we are works of art yeah. mm-hmm. but we get caught up in the rat race and work and ministry and everything else that we're doing and we forget mm-hmm. we lose that shine so That's I wanted right. to create something for her and for him to remind him something he can look at because we, honestly when we get home from work and doing all that other stuff mm-hmm. I'm not going to be in stilettos and lace for you every night <laughs> I'm just not going to do it right. I, I'm not going to do it as that happens honeymoon sure. anniversary you know every now and then I'm going to surprise then. you when you come right. home but right. I just don't have time for it right. my day right. last 18, 19 hours long. So I, I don't have time for it when I get home. But mm-hmm. I wanted to give her something to give to him mm-hmm. to put on that wall mm-hmm. to remind him, okay, okay, I got this rag on my head because I'm tired. Mm. But I want you to look at the work of art that I am mm-hmm. and never forget it. Yeah. And I need to have something to look at oh, to boy. remind me that I'm a work of art mm-hmm. and wow. never forget it. What's that song? You remind me. <laughs> yes. Girl, you better preach. Listen. Your, your photographer is about to catch the whole spirit of some of you. She's looking at it. Look at it. She's picking it up and putting it down. Yes. Uh-huh. There, were, there was a couple who was getting married, uh, and they went to the – so there were a bunch of women came together for the bridal party, I think mm-hmm. they call it, the bridal, mm-hmm. what, what, the bridal thing, shower, shower bridal or something shower, like that. Yeah. And uh, two sisters brought in some things that were very romantic. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. was this lingerie with some toys? Mm-hmm. And, yes. And a lot of the uh, the older saints were like, "Oh my God, that's no! no how like dare that. you? They oh, like this that. is horrible! That's Why would you?" The problem. Yeah. And those sisters were like, "You know what? That's what's wrong with y'all's marriage. Yeah. Y'all yeah. just these men want this stuff. Yes, they do. But you two frigid. 
Yeah, oh, no. he comes you home. Holier than thou, really? Yeah. What is, I'm trying to save y'all's marriage is here. <laughs> because I, God, if you I want pray. somebody else will, and yeah. that's another oh, that's, see, That um, is the problem. See, if yeah. you guys are going to go there, I'm going to go there. I prayed yeah, this morning to hold my tongue, mm-hmm. but don't, you mm-hmm. all are going there, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to go there in a second <laughs> if y'all don't stop. you here to hold your tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you what's coming. This is actually mild compared to what me and Alvin Carter talks about, so you in the right seat. That's the album seat there, so a whole bunch of stuff won't jump out of you. Cool, cool. Okay, and then so oh, I got a phone call. No, no, Who? Your cousin oh, he's still on the phone. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Yes, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's bring him on in. He, he, I got two guests here. My cousin calling. Uh, all right. Is he there, cousin? You still there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. Hey, cousin, how you doing? I'm doing good. You know, uh, I, I've seen uh, work like that. Uh, that she's describing, I'm imagining it's probably some type of photographic uh, project. And mm-hmm. uh, I think, you know, what they're talking about is very important. Mm-hmm. But since we're talking about Eros, yeah, um, I think, you know, like, you know, you all are saying that the, the, the problem with uh, marriages and churches because we're frigid and we don't discuss things. Mm. But I kind of disagree because especially in the Church of God in Christ, we were prohibited from going to the show. But with mm-hmm. the advent of, v, of um, VHS, mm-hmm. we got everything that the show and more. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, we're at the point now where Playboy is not going to even do pictorials in a nude anymore simply right. because you can get anything you want off right. the internet for, for free. free. Yeah, right, mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. You know, so what we need to teach, I believe, is what love really is. Yes, sir. And if all you got going for you is eros, eventually eros is going to die. Absolutely. Right, that yeah. Fly, that flower Absolutely. is going to wither. Once mm-hmm. you cut a rose and put it in water, it won't even last a week. Mm. Right. And I think everything needs to have a balance. Now, mm-hmm. cousin, you probably didn't hear me at the very beginning. Uh, and maybe you didn't read what I put on the post when I said that Eros is full on television. We see right. it everywhere. Because mm-hmm. you guys on Thursday nights, uh, yeah. you, you know, Olivia Pope was sleeping with the president. You know, uh, we saw oh a lot of that. Sure okay. Was. And then now Wednesday nights uh, is Empire. Okay. okay. All right. So we, and, and, and basketball wives and your mama's wives and everybody's wives <laughs> doing something. Okay. So you see a lot of that. But the church in itself do not come together like Bible study. Yeah, and they, yeah. that's what we're talking about. And they do not sit there and talk to the 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 couples, married and single, because mm-hmm. the single people need to know about this stuff. See, okay, how to, to when they get into that institute of marriage to talk about sex. Mm-hmm. If y'all ain't talking about it now, before, because there's some things that the woman may not want, and you think she wants and desires, mm-hmm. and y'all ain't talked about that's it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Y'all afraid to talk about it because you say, well, you know, if we talk about it, you know, we we sinning because we talking about See, it and we not supposed. Sin. That's I, not the same. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't change my whole uh, mantra on that whole thing. If I'm dating, I'm and I'm and I plan on marrying this woman. We talking about sex. You better oh, talk yes. about it. Before. I'm talking about. I'm talking, talking about, about what I like, what I don't like, mm-hmm. what you like, what you don't like. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you know, but even mm-hmm. that, that even that changes. I mean, uh, you all was talking about the photograph, and you all was talking about stilettos and lingerie and that kind of stuff. What happens when you get 60 years old? Still wear it. If that's all it. a man wants from you, he's going to be very disappointed. Can I interject? Let me, because he's speaking truth. He is speaking truth, but I have to, I have to counter that. Um, <clears throat> you're absolutely right. That should not be all that they have. I don't expect, mm-hmm. no, I do expect a 60-year-old woman to be Still wearing sexy. stilettos mm-hmm. and lace with her husband That's in the right. confines of her home. Right. I absolutely do expect that. But you're absolutely right. Things do change. Um, and that's my point. Um, things are going to change. But let me let me also say this. We say that, well, if all he has, if all y'all have is the arrows love, then things are not going to last. I want to, let me submit to you this. If all you have is the agape love, things will not die, but they're going to get very boring. dull. See, I was trying to be nice. They're mm-hmm. going to get very, very boring. That's all we're saying. We're not saying that um, Eros love, you know, that's all you need. No, we want to add that to that agape love because they are both needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One is not, you know, you can't say, well, we got the agape love. That's um, 
that, that's all you need. I joke with my mom. I don't want you getting married and you married to God. And right. she says, absolutely not. You, I want that love, that love <laughs> that you have with your husband. Don't close me off like that. <laughs> we, you know, well, so, let, let, let me say this. When I think we use using agape the wrong way. How do you, you mean? You can't have agape love. To, you know, well, what my, my understanding of agape love, we can't really have agape love for anybody but God. Okay. All right, what I'm saying, well, this, you know, I'm glad Jesus used parables because that's, that's the way that I can express myself. Mm-hmm. To me, eros is the flaming match that lights the fuse. Mm-hmm. Okay, eventually when the fuse hits the bomb, then you have an explosion. So eros is the fuse, is the, is the, is the flame and the fuse. Mm-hmm. The bomb is the love because mm-hmm. what happens is when you have an explosion, it makes an impact mm-hmm. that lasts forever. Mm-hmm. Like I Hiroshima love that. and Nagasaki, when the atomic bomb dropped on those two cities, they have craters that are there in that city still, now. Yeah, still there, yes. That is still there. In other words, when you really love somebody, it makes an imprint on your psyche. Yes. That goes beyond the physical. Yes, yes. That goes beyond the metaphysical. Yes. You lose yourself completely. I was in a nursing home for three years, and I saw a couple. The woman had Alzheimer's disease, and there was nothing that was, she was withering away. But her husband came and visited her every day. Wow. That was not Eros. Well, that was not Eros, not at all. That was not Eros. That was real love. Our definition of love has been skewed by emotions and feelings that are just temporary mm-hmm. and temporal. Mm-hmm. All right, so what I'm saying to you, yes, you need that flame. We are, God gave us eyes. God gave us a nose that smells the sweet scent. God gave us nerve endings on our on our hands so we can feel the smoothness of our mate and god gave us the nerve endings on our genitals so we can enjoy each other Mm -hmm. but we got to understand what that is really for why did god give us these things is it just for us to gobble each other up until it's nothing left yes no, the reason why God <laughs> does this is because we knew he knew like that we were miserable for heaven. <laughs> we are strangers in a strange land. Mm-hmm. Our home is with God. Okay, cousin. And we're going to be miserable and we're going to be alone until we get with God. And so we enjoy each other to take away our pain. And if we don't have the commitment, that's what real love is. Right. You make a decision to love that person for the rest of your life. And when you make that decision, it's almost like God creating something. God said, let there be, and it was. When you make that commitment to a woman, or a man makes a commitment to a woman, or a woman makes a commitment to a man, whatever it takes in heaven and earth for it to be so, that's what love is going to be. Okay, cousin, today is about arrows. (laughs) Just today. (laughs) Just today. I hear you can't <laughs> preach a sermon. I got two guests on the show. I got, you know I got I'm limited saying, time. Ain't that, but ain't that arrows? Isn't that arrows for your mind? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Let's put it this way. Okay. Don't whoop that on a woman. Okay. Make it quick. I got to go to break and cut this off. Go right, ahead. You know your guests are going to talk about this for the rest of the time with there. If I whip that on them, he's talking about whipping something. Hold on. Oh, you talking about women? Ooh, now, now you talking. What are you saying? What's that? I said, if I, if I told a woman that, because I told my wife this, and I mean it, she's going to love me forever. Yeah, yeah. That's Because that's, that's what a woman and a man is looking for. Right. They feel the eros, but they want that commitment. And I'm yeah. hanging They want up. both. Yeah, they, they want, want both. both. Yeah, I hear you. Now you you preach a good sermon there, and um and it's a well balanced sermon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear right, what, you know, good sermons are well balanced. That it's supposed to be. Uh, yes, sir. yes, I right. appreciate that. I All right, appreciate right. that. Thank you, Doc. Um, uh-huh. and 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 uh, the whole Gopi thing. I want to disagree with him about it's only being God's love. It's actually brotherly love, mm-hmm. charity, the love of God for man and man f- for, for God. God yeah. So we still have the ability to have agape love because without it, uh, the other love means nothing. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so so yeah, it, it is both. It's something that. that God has given us. It is a gift. Uh, now you, you're you're you got an event coming up 
this Thursday. Yes. Okay. Yes. Where, where area Thursday. is? Where is it? It's actually going to be at the Little Black Pearl in Chicago. Little Black the Pearl. The famed Little Black Pearl in Chicago. I'm so excited to mm. be at that location. And it's appropriate. Is it? It's appropriate. Wow. It is. But you, it is. Uh, uh, and now this is, uh, is it a gallery? What it's a, it? well, let me tell you uh, briefly. It, it's actually, it's a, it's an art center. You know, I can't put it all into words. It's an mm-hmm. art center. It's a, it's a, it's now a, they put a high school in there. Um, but it was, it was something that um, was opened up to what, well, what she's been doing lately. She's been giving a lot of inner city youth who would not normally have the opportunity to have the arts and mm-hmm. have, um, you know, be nurtured uh, educationally. She's given them opportunities to do that. And she does that. It was on her own dime. Now she gives them grants and things like that because they see she's doing an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so she has workshops. She had, And when I was visited last week, I didn't know they, I was like, why are all these kids here? Well, they opened a high school in there. It's a big, oh. huge building. Really? But yeah, and it's an amazing thing. And she gives back to the owner is a beautiful um, African American woman, and she gives back to the community. That's why I think that it's amazing that we're going to be here. But um, it, she has a big atrium in the middle. She's got workshops, but then she has this big, gorgeous atrium in the middle, um, glass enclosed, and two levels and everything. And that's where we're going to be. Mm-hmm. I see. It's uh, I'm looking at the flyer here, uh, October 29th. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> For those of you who are listening to this show, October the 30th, it's over. <clears throat> It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's over because you know we we broadcast around the world oh. <laughs> every day, and somebody yeah. might be on my Spreaker account listening to this right, don't go there next year around it. December. Yeah. Okay, it's over with. But if you listen to the show before October 29th, two thousand fifteen, don't go there. Don't yeah, don't or go there. For <laughs> yeah, go there for else, something for else. The yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the little black pearl, uh, ten sixty one zero six zero East forty seventh Street. Now I'm trying to see. 1000 East. Uh, is that cottage? That sounds around that red area there. Mm-hmm. Now, 40, now you know, we're in the Bronzeville yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. This seems, this sounds like Bronzeville. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's, it, but it's, yeah, it's mm-hmm. very close. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I can, I can throw a rock and hit old lady Johnson over there. So does that mean we're going to see you? Is, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking, I've been, I'm looking Excellent. at my calendar. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at my calendar. I'm trying to see what's going on here. Excellent. Okay. But I see here. You're coming. You got you got early bird tickets are available, y'all. No, they're no, not. They're not. They're not. not anymore. Not okay, anymore. so that's false advertising. Stop saying. It's a, no, what does it <laughs> say? It says until Wednesday, October. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So, spokesmodel for Arrows Central Digital Art. Uh, that's you, uh, Wakishi. By the way, one mm-hmm. of. She's uh, just one, one of. of them. She's one of my beautiful living. spokesmodels. She yeah. will be a living, breathing work of art, walking around, answering any questions. Mm-hmm. Um, right now. You know, mm-hmm. they're going to be doing more talking than me. I think. Sure, sure. You gonna have some champagne tonight. I'm gonna have some champagne. Yeah, I'm so, sorry. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Saints. It's, yeah, okay. Did, be some who, did anybody say it was a sin drink? Huh? Who no. said it was a sin drink? No. Who, who in this room? Think I didn't it was say that. Did I anybody said say it's going. Down. Okay, then there's gonna be some champagne in there, right? That's right. Champagne. Okay, don't mess with me. And jazz. Because I can't find it nowhere in scripture that it said mm-hmm. that cha- drink champagne. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just said don't be drunk. Okay, That's go to jazz. You got some jazz stuff going on? Oh yeah, live live band. A live band? Oh, so I may have to reconsider. I may have to reconsider. Refreshments? Y'all gonna eat? Eat. Eat. Okay. You're not, you're not going to have dinner. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You so eat, eat dinner. Have dinner before yeah, you there you go. <laughs> right. or, or have dinner afterwards. Because this, this is, yeah. Right. This is a right. finger food. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, and then the, the art. Uh-oh. Secret the place. Art. Gallery yeah. Yeah. This is great, y'all. Okay. October 29th. Pull out your calendar. No, pull out your iPhones and your the mother your phones. That's right. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and plug it in there and then go there. Because there is a Facebook event that some of y'all, one of y'all created. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. Hey, Brittany, the song you're going to play, just play two minutes of it and come back. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, as you do your stations and breaks and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's sexual healing. And some of y'all, I'm telling y'all, some of y'all in these houses <laughs> need to hear this. Well, I, cause I'm telling you, if I was married right now, and I want to minister to my woman, listen, I'm not playing Kirk this, Franklin stuff. Oh my God, please! I'm not playing Kirk please Franklin. Please, God. Mahia Jackson, she not allowed during not that, that time. Night. No, we're not ministering with uh, Sacred Healing. I got to get out of here for a minute, and I'm coming right back. <laughs> Sir Walter Jones Show.
Thinking back in time when love was only in my mind, I realize ain't no second chance. You've got to hold on to romance. Don't let it slide. There's a special kind of magic in the air when you find another heart that needs to share. How it was, and all those walks together, out in any kind of weather, just because there's a brand new way of looking at your life when you know that love. Is Necessarily expressive views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. It's Fireside Friday. Sit back, relax, grab some tea and crumpets, and let's talk about the current events of the week. Right here on the Sir Walter Jones Show. Friday. 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 Baby, come to me, James Ingram, and uh, that other person. <laughs> yeah, Patty Austin, there she is. <laughs> Patty Austin is a good lord. The voice on that woman is amazing. Yes. Have you ever heard a voice and you just said, I'm going to marry that person? Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, she did that for yes. me. She did that for me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then I realized I was too young at the time. <laughs> I'm older now, so I can do it. But you, can, you can pull it out. I can pull it off. She'd be a cougar, off. but uh, I can pull it off. I don't mind being in the arms of a cougar. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That So we did Criss Cross. We did uh, Lenny Williams. We did Earth, Wind, and Fire. Lita Baker. Okay. We're going to D, Brittany. D is and David. Okay. Let's see if y'all can uh, understand what she's crying about here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, if he only knew. How, how you know so fast? I, it was only now. three seconds. Not the first even understand. Huh? Huh? This is what? What I this, do. this is what you do. This is what I listen. To. Okay. I listen. Okay. What, what's Patty the Bell talking about here? Uh, mm-hmm. now, now she can yell at me. Please she can don't sing. play this whole thing. Huh? Please don't. <laughs> I ain't got serious. time to play it all. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time. Okay. Now it was uh, it was a single written and produced primarily by a Dexter Wan a Wans- Cynthia Biggs, uh, six solo album, I'm in love again, and it was released as the album's official first single in 1983. Hey, what you doing, 83? Um, learning to write in cursive. Really? Yes. <laughs> write in cursive. Mm-hmm. Spent four weeks at number one uh, on the R&B charts, 1984, and uh, it is her first crossover pop hit. Y'all better sing. How much I do, do love you. 
Y'all need a baritone. Yes. Please turn this off. All right, it's Please going off. off. Going off. Because I don't want nothing to happen over there. Yeah. I don't want you calling your, your husband on the phone right now. Right. During Tell him you're busy. No, he's texting. Yeah, he's texting he's right texting now. Me. Is he? Yes. Yeah, and she's texting and she's he testing. He says, you guys sound awesome. <laughs> Call me oh. when you're done. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Then he said, what was that song? It then he said, P.S. Brandy's sexy. Yeah. Oh, oh, he didn't oh, say yeah, that. She I like added it. That. You no, see what I'm saying? It's right here. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's some, that's what's his name, by the way? What's his name? Joe. That's Oh, Joe. I saw him share your post on his wall. Joe Doc. Man, yes. yeah, you you about to get job. blessed tonight. By oh, the way, yes. I want to tell you, your your hands about to be lifted tonight <laughs> in in worship. Worship, yes, not sir. Just, you not going in, doc? Doc, you going in tonight? Oh, <laughs> you going in? That man loves him <laughs> some brand. Come on now, oh, come on now. Yes, yes, sir. You blessed, man. He's, Beyond he measure. He stands right by her mm-hmm. even during the shoots. Really? Yes. That's oh, awesome. yes. Uh, whatever she needs. Oh, no, don't say that. Not during mm-hmm. arrow shoots. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. Well, for You're quantum allowed. imaging, yes. Oh, okay. Got yeah. Yes. We yeah. don't want to. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not arrow. I can't right? rewind this. No. I can't rewind this. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, not for arrows. You will not be there. You will not be there. Uh huh. Yeah, somebody get some pictures of these and then post them. She did. Okay. No, no, I need you to post them while we're in the room. Post. Take a picture of it right here. And you know, yeah, yeah, we need this for uh, mm-hmm. our, our records. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he knows you're yeah. good. Come on now, He's I don't good. play. He knows. I mean, I've been in media a long time. He knows. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, now yeah, let's let's go to E, uh, Brittany, because of, uh, uh, now I don't know. You might miss this one, w- Waukesha. I don't know. You yeah. think I'm gonna miss it? Yeah. Well, okay. Let's see. Nope. Got it. <laughs> 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 well, Keisha, you are a uh, uh, human. Yeah. I don't think he knows who he's Whoever my future husband is, uh-huh. he's going to be like, this yeah, girl. This chick right, right this here. Girl. She's I'm full of arrows. Yes. Right? <laughs> She's an arrow. I'm calling Oscar Brandy. Can you turn this <laughs> off? <laughs> what? Arrows. Yes. You don't think I do that one? Yes. Oh. Uh, Be a better love. Not, no. Not never. Let me be quiet. Not about never. To say something. I forget where 1978, y'all, R&B yes. funk band. Yes. That f- this is Switch. The band yeah. Switch found fame recording for the this Gordy label. Mm-hmm. 1970. Released hit songs such as uh, They'll Never Be, I Call Your Name, Girl. Remember that? Yes. Love Over and Over Again. Switch influenced bands such as the, the, the Barge. Yes. Which featured the siblings, Bobby and uh, Tommy DeBarge is in this, uh, is, 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 is in this group. Mm-hmm. 1978. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> I was three Brandy, years old. what were you doing in 1978? Uh, three years old? Yeah. You was three, huh? I was three. Okay, well, you weren't allowed to listen to this at that time. <laughs> no. Why can't she was how old? Three. You was three, too? Three, yeah. Oh, you just, just sweet she little babies. Me by a few oh, just really, a few months? Yes. Okay, all right. Photographer. Uh, how old were you in 1978? You was five? Yeah. You okay. All right. Yeah, you old. You the senior citizen among the three. <laughs> okay. We're going to F, Brittany. This, now, you're going to get this one right away. This is easy. This is real easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this one is too yes. easy. This was, a, this was a dead giveaway. This is my stepper song. Right it's your stepper song? Yes. Okay, okay. LTD, Love Ballad. Mm-hmm. Released from their album, Love to the World. Spent two weeks at number one. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Amen. 1976. <laughs> Peach, number 20. What's he saying here, Rokisha? Uh, he's in love again. All these songs yeah. are all about the deep love that deep they love. felt for whoever they were singing to. I see. Who met all him? just I don't know who he was singing to. He could have been singing to me. I wasn't born yet. You weren't born yet? Okay, he what could. Year did you say that? What, what, year, what did I say? Oh, this is a 1976. I was one. You was one? Yes. Yeah, well, he was rocking you in the cradle. Yes. Right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> probably wasn't even one yeah. yet. Yeah, probably would not. No. Uh huh. Okay, let's go to the last one, Brittany. This is the G. 
Okay, this one right here. All right. All you need is the birds. <laughs> That's all you need is the birds. Yes, mini Ripperton. See, see, you, you, you know, you know, you missed your calling. I'm telling you, yeah. there's got to be some yes. kind of career. So, there's got to be some kind of career. You should really? name that tune Game uh, show something. Very nice. I would win. Yeah. Yeah. If it stayed in this era, I would win. Yeah, you, you would win. And I might do good in the early You would win. Too. Yeah, yeah. This is my song. And I can't sing it. Mm-hmm. If you guys like the song on it, I'm gonna hit that key. If it's, no, if it's not, if <laughs> no, you can get to no. that part. You gonna hit that key? I'm doing it. You gonna bust a gut? I'm about to try it. I'm gonna do it. 1975, originally performed by American singer Minnie Ripperton. Uh, and uh, uh, she has another favorite song of mine. I wish you had it in your repertoire, but you don't. And what's that? Um, it's called Come Inside Me. Oh, come inside of me? Oh, that's a... Listen, I, love that I know every minute we've been Uh-oh, uh-oh. You just, you. you just busted the ears of Brittany, the engineer. You just busted her ears. Everybody <laughs> said... You just busted her eardrums out. Everybody just turned their radios off. Everybody anyway. just said, you know what? They threw their iPhones out the window. I'm going to have to give her a ticket, show a bad ticket or something to pay her back for that. She's suffering right now. Okay, Brit. <laughs> Well, you can fade it. Just right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. Make it, like, give it some mood music. Mm-hmm. Why don't you yes. come inside me? Do, Do you want Oh, yes. come on. I know that song. Inside my love. Yeah, you see, That's a low octave I'm telling you, these married couples need to hear these songs. Yes. And they would they stay need, they, I'm telling you. Would be so but happy. they would have to adhere to the songs, yes. though. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and don't just let it be uh, just music. Just for the night. Yeah, yeah. L- listen yeah. to the words live of these that. songs and let. Live? Yeah, no, they have to mm. live. Yeah, it. they mm-hmm. really have to live these songs, uh, <clears throat> because again, I-, I understand what my cousin was saying. There, there, yes. there needs to be a well yes. balance of, yes. of uh, uh, phileo, okay, and agape, and uh, and uh, uh, what, what was it? Uh, Stoto gay, mm-hmm. I think it's called. Stoto gay. Okay, all these are great. But again, among the Christians, like we don't talk about mental illness, hmm. we do not talk hmm. about. See, errors. that's a whole. See, that's a problem, the and y'all's problem. marriages are going down the tubes. And let me tell you this, and, and I'm very transparent on my show. I'm the guy that used to pick up uh, the the seconds and the leftovers. Mm. I was the pickup mm. guy. See, you could teach right now. I'm, I'm teaching right now. He you could teach I right now. I picked up the the, the leftovers. Teach. It was those married women. Yes, sir. Who said my husband ain't doing nothing for me? And I said, Well, come on over. Mm. I got you. I'm telling y'all, I can say this <clears> now, <throat> okay? Because I don't delve in. I don't, I don't mess with married women no more. All right, mm-hmm. but I'm telling y'all to help y'all out. Husbands, if you ain't throwing That's down, it. That's there's another guy the waiting guy, for you to go to work. Where's that? Pol- one where's guy? It, the collection. Mm-hmm. She said, "What guy? Right? Can, you guy? know? Can I? And, and uh-huh. I want to say this to Please cousin, and not you know, just because again, I feel what he was saying. Yeah. Everybody's but why? Cousin. Whenever we talk about, um, when we talk about, you know what? Today I want to talk about a guy love. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Let's let's sit back and listen. Okay, um, I want to talk about filial love. Great, let's sit back and listen. Today I want to talk about Earl's love. Well, no, let's go back and talk about that agape. Mm-hmm. No. no. Why do we keep shifting? Why are we so uncomfortable mm-hmm. when we talk about the sensual, sexual love that's supposed to be between two people? Yes. That is the pro- that, And that's the problem now. We keep switching back. We know about the agape. We know about the filial Because that's all we have heard. Sure. So why when I want to talk about the arrows, which we should be talking about, mm-hmm. Well, also, you need to talk about... No, no. we finna talk about arrows and today. Only that's arrows. what we're going to talk about, because that's what needs to be spoken and, and I think the, the reason why they always uh, keep uh, keep bringing that up because they see so much sexual sin. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. right. Yes. And so it's fornication yes. and adultery to keep seeing that yes. so rampant, all right? Yes. Well, it's because uh, moderation in everything. Uh-huh. Yes. Because yes. because of the ones the same ones who are talking about a certain sin are the ones who are obese and they can't stop eating mm-hmm. so they get fatter and fatter and fatter and explode which is also a sin. So which is also a sin you see they, what I'm saying or they're thieves or, or they're they don't thieves want to talk about or they're liars, liars. Oh, okay or liars. okay liars. absolutely oh, savers okay. you you see there's a whole list of stuff all right, right so there should be a well balance absolutely. of talking about. If you can talk about sin, talk about it talk all. Talk about it all. That's it. And and just go to Romans one. We did a show yesterday in Romans one. Read Romans one and how how the Apostle Paul gave a bucket list of all yes, of did. them. Yes, all he right? did. He says, okay, now let's just stop, let's stop all this. Not just one, right. <laughs> all of them, mm-hmm. and let's move on to some peace. Uh, and so today we're talking about arrows because I'm trying to um, bring back what really look at the um, Song of Solomon. Uh-huh. 
There is an yes. entire book oh called God. Song of Songs, Song of Solomon. It's the Canticles. And that man, Solomon, that Shulamite woman, you listen to the oh language. Oh, my gosh. Yes. If, they was, if that wasn't Eros, I'm sorry. Because you can't be talking about a copy and then bring up breasts. No, right. no, you cannot. You just can't do it. No, you cannot. And he was like, those breasts are breasts. like two rolls. Right. <laughs> he says, I am compared to thee, my love. Oh, my. You are preaching. To Pharaoh's chariots. You know that song by uh, R. Kelly? You remind me of my Jeep. Yes. yes. Now, some women used to hear that says, that's, that, why, would you, why would I remind you of something like that? Uh-huh. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. But let me say something. I think that was one of the greatest songs written about uh, a love for a man to his woman. You know why? Oh, wow. Because watch how a man treat his car. Hmm. <laughs> Talk about it. He washes it every day. Every day. <laughs> when he brought that car, he, he took it off the lot and bought it and brought it home. You know what he does when he get out he the car? He covers it up. <laughs> He either covers up or as his on his as he's walking up to his he'll his touch door, it. he'll touch it, he'll look around, he'll walk backwards yeah. to look at oh, it. Oh yeah. wow. He'll go in wow. the house and he'll look out the window and at sit that there car. And, and adore it. He'll go to bed and at two AM he gets up and he looks out the Checks window at that car. car. He gets up at two AM. Yes he does. Yes he does. That's his that's his baby, all right? He makes sure it's clean, he, he uh-huh. vacuums it, he checks the tire pressure and he goes to the to the to a car store <laughs> <laughs> and he buys all of the accessories yeah, for it. Yeah. So when she, when he says you remind me of my Jeep, he's uh-huh. saying you remind me of the most precious thing right now that to me. Top. That's that Jeep. Oh, and, but but come on now. That's yes. No, that's yeah. hard for me to. That, uh-huh. I'm, that's, mm-hmm. I'm still having trouble. I know you don't because you're a woman. Just yeah. because you're a woman. I don't have trouble uh-huh. with you're it. Woman. I'm having now, trouble uh-huh. here. Now, now watch this. I'm going to let you go. I don't have trouble with it you don't have pro- I why? understand it. I know you do. I know you do. Because that whole, that same book about the apostle, uh, the uh, Song of Solomon, mm-hmm. you know what he said to her? He says, I have compared you to Pharaoh's chariots. Mm-hmm. So she reminded him. Of that Jeep. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Have you ever seen a Clydesdale horse? Oh, it's one of the most prettiest horses. Beautiful. Ain't that something? Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he was saying. Mm, he I said, you it. see how okay. beautiful the Clydesdale horse? You remind me of that horse because I admire that horse. You know, I, I mm. hear you. Yeah. I do. And I'm, let me just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. R, R. Kelly is just, the R. Kelly part. He's a poet. I, I, mm-hmm. I would like it better if he said, Your, my Jeep reminds me of you. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's mm-hmm. just the, mm-hmm. the only problem with that. Because you're a woman. Because I'm a woman. Yeah. And I own that. You know, I want to say this also really quick. Um, we, because you said something really good, and I don't mm-hmm. want to forget it. Sure, you said that <clears throat> the reason why a lot of people are having problems um, is be some people, not a lot of people, mm-hmm. but some people are having problems because we don't want to get, we don't want to over sexualize, we right. don't want to be associated with sexual sin. Right. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about. It. Um, but. Let's also make the distinction. Sex is not sin. Mm -hmm. Sex, you don't have to associate sex. A lot of people people automatically associate nudity and sex with sin. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about grown folks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about grown married folks. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it, they just automatically immediately turn up their nose That's at just the point. thought. But you naked sometimes. I hope yeah. at some, especially when if you're you married. I hope yeah. no, you know <laughs> not when you shower. I hope that at some point in your day and night you're naked and you're naked together and you yes. don't look at that as yes. a. a and uh, something that's bad. Yeah. Um, Turn the lights on. Mm-hmm. Now, and, and I understand the perceptions with Eros. A lot of people, well, you know, it's public nudity. No, it's only public because Eros has been around for a while. Long mm-hmm. time. But I, it, it's been a secret for me. My my, my art has been around. It's, this isn't new. I, this is something I've been doing. But it's been in secret because of the very nature of it. My clients. Got it. That's between them and their <clears throat> husband. Got it. So what I do. So I can't advertise it. I that's, can't show people what I do. Love it. Um, um, so it's been around for a while, but at some point I had to say, you know what? I need to let people know what I do. See, yeah. So you will see people. Yes. Um, I got a lot of ministry cause I'm in, in ministry. I'm a minister. Sure. Um, I, I got a lot of people on my pages who were like, what? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I just saw a nipple. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I need you to explain to me what's yeah, going on. Yeah. Um, th- those who don't know that I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. an artist as well. Um, and I had to let them know this Eros isn't something that that's meant to be seen by the masses. Right. It just so happens that I've got some clients and mm-hmm. some spokesmodels mm-hmm. who have gifted me mm-hmm. and honored me by saying, yes, please transform mm-hmm. me. I want to be part mm-hmm. of this, but I also want you to take my images and show the world mm-hmm. what you do, what yes. the world, what you do is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes. You need to show people what you do. That's right. And so I'm so grateful to them. Wow. Um, you know, 
but Eros is not meant to be. You're not gonna see your Eros on my Facebook page, my yeah. fan page. Yeah. You're not gonna see Eros on a billboard. That's between you and your man. Mm -hmm. Or if you get it done for yourself, a lot of the women do. That's gonna be in, on your wall mm -hmm. in your home. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna see it plastered. So I want I want to say that it is a very private thing. That's good. Um, but it is what it is. It's nudity. Mm -hmm. That's that's the point of it. That is so true. Yeah. Let's talk about the blockers in the head that causes people to be attracted yes. to one another. Okay, yes. there's three words we usually hear as far as um, m maybe medicine is concerned. One is dopamine. Uh -huh. Yes. Another one is oxytoxin, I think they call mm -hmm. it. And the next one is uh, norepinephrine. Okay. okay that's uh, no. new. Yeah. That All right. Okay. Now these three do three different things. Okay. Cause, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define it and maybe you guys can tell me uh, how to use it. Okay. 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 Uh, we did a show called why men watch pornography okay. on this show. Okay. okay. Uh, and it was, a, we went I'll there. Bet. Oh, I'll we went bet. there. We went straight transparent. I'll okay. Bet. All right. And I brought up these terms why men could get hooked on certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So dopamine, uh, what it, it, it focus, it focuses your attention when a dopamine is activated. Mm -hmm. Now these are called neural transmitters. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it, 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 what it does is it also ignores negatives. Okay. So that's why people get hooked on drugs and yeah. what have you. Uh -huh. yeah. right, so it ignores negatives. It triggers ecstasy in you. Yeah. And, uh, and then also it gives you a, a powerful dependency on that uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. okay. okay. That's, that's what dopamine does. Wow. Okay. Can you find any similarity mm -hmm. in this? In, uh, can we use this positively though uh -huh. in arrows? Oh God. Yes. Yeah. I, I let me yes please, please. Uh, flow bird you better flow <laughs> I, the, the similarity for me uh -huh. now um, mm -hmm. and I was just sharing this kind of with her on our way mm -hmm. here about how I see myself mm -hmm. well once she transformed me I couldn't stop Mm -hmm. looking at myself mm -hmm. because it was a thing of beauty that I had never seen Same. before yes. about myself mm -hmm. and so every time I would go back to my email with you know she she sent me like thumbnails of all the pictures that she took of me I kept going back to my favorite one mm -hmm. and I'm like I I I I love this piece this is all uh uh it expresses who I, I am or who I am at that moment. And it, it was a high for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind sharing it with people. That's why I put it on the thread already. Yeah. You've seen it because it's, it's a natural high for me mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. myself like that. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. that's why I, I can relate to that mm -hmm. dopamine <laughs> feeling because <laughs> I want that high all the time. Uh, and you know what it calls her to do? What, what did Ignore the negatives. Let's see. <laughs> it really did. Ignore the negatives. We focus on the negatives so much about us. Oh, I don't look the way I am. Exactly. Oh, I this. Yes. Oh, my crow's feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I put on some. It, it, it caused her to ignore yes. the negatives. Forget love it. all that. Love mm -hmm. it. Love it. Love this, it. Is, this is who I am. And I hope that one day, whoever again he is, can view me or see me the way mm -hmm. I see myself yes. and, 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 and want that, that dopamine effect yes. every time he sees me. Sees you. Come see, on now. See, y'all educate my audience out there. Come on. Uh, <laughs> this one here is oxytoxin. Okay. It's called the cuddle chemical. Mm. It's, it's pe the, what, the, when this is activated, men want to cuddle. cuddle. Uh -huh. Okay. Really? Uh, number two, it uh, creates a bond. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then when released uh, while doing whatever you're doing, uh, he is bonded to it more and more. Mm. So help us out here. Oxytoxin, once it's activated in him, uh, depending on where he is, he becomes bonded to it and he wants more of it. He he's to cuddled to it. All right. It, so yeah. can y'all use that to a man's advantage? Uh, because wow. you, you want him to be attracted to you and bonded to you <laughs> and not some other woman. Hmm. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Cause, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I got to ask this. What is sure. this drug man used for? What is it prescribed for? No, no, no. These are not drugs. These is everybody have these chemicals on the brain. Chemicals. Oh, okay. Cause I was going to say, this is scary to oh, me. Oh yeah. Yeah. You yeah. could go and get this over the counter and say, you know what? This <laughs> well, is going to be no, the one. You're going to cuddle naturally. with me. Yeah, you have it naturally. <laughs> you have it naturally. We'll be cuddling tonight. Yeah. Right. right. Um, <laughs> okay. Now that we, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, you know what? Um, I'm going on my third day without sleep. Uh -oh. So you have to forgive me. I lose a couple of things. You did just say that. Um, now let's let's talk about that. Sure, I I have a piece, and I was not able to bring it today. It's an absolutely beautiful piece, and it's the the acrylic. Oh, I show, the one you showed me. Oh, the I acrylic. Oh, okay, good. It's posted. Um, it's a beautiful piece of a beautiful woman who, up until very recently, just did not feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, she's been told by people she trusts that she loves that have been in her life and supposed to be in her corner. She's been told that. 
she's all she's been heard, heard about is her body issues. Mm. Um, she's been, and it's kept her very, um, what's the word? I don't want to say frigid. Not, that's absolutely not what I want to say. Right? Yes. Okay. But it's kept her very enclosed, very, mm. um, to herself, mm-hmm. uh, um, very secretive about her body. Well, she ended up being one of my most, her piece ended up being one of my mm-hmm. most literal pieces. Mm-hmm. By literal, I mean in your face. I My pieces are usually kind of delicate. Mm-hmm. You can kind of imagine what you're looking at. This one is bam. Um, and I was scared to even do it. Um, uh-huh. I was scared of what it was because I, I didn't want people to say, oh, okay, now you were doing all these delicate pieces or whatever. Mm-hmm. What's this? Um, so I was scared to do it and I was scared even more so for her, but after her reading, reading her words, mm. I had, and listening to the music that she sent me and I had to do it. it. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing about this, when her man sees it, when her man looks at that piece, what he wants to do is quote unquote cuddle mm. yeah. immediately. That's he it. wants, let's go now. Because let's, he knows that that's his, that's piece. his, that's his, that's his piece. I like that's that. Right. <laughs> and, and you know what? And it's just a trigger to him. It's a trigger for him there to look is. at. Um, now to her, it means all these to her and mm-hmm. I, cause we know the process. Mm-hmm. It means all these deep things. It's an awakening of my spirit. Mm-hmm. It's me to him is mm-hmm. yeah. look at my hands, it. what I'm look doing with my, my hands. Right. Yes. What am I doing? This, yes. this is a trigger for him. Mm-hmm. I want See. to touch her. See, And that's your wife. That's your wife. That's not some yeah. random miscellaneous right. chick that you saw in a magazine or right. on and TV and all that's thrown in your right. face mm-hmm. on TV. Mm-hmm. This is your wife. Right. Yep. You know, right. It's it's a trigger, it's a trigger. Yeah. and that's it's nothing more beautiful see, than that to me. You, you you went there, see, and men are about images. Uh-huh. Yes, very. Visual. If we were yes. not, we wouldn't see the images on television. Mm-hmm. What happened? Right. We pick up a golf magazine. You know what's going to be in that magazine? Mm-hmm. Women selling golf clubs. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Why can't the men sell them? Bent over. Oh, the golf clubs. Like, <laughs> okay. It wouldn't sell. To it, it, it wouldn't sell that much. Sell. No. No. no, no. And I'm in advertising, and uh, I've learned that a woman selling a product will sell more than a man selling the product. Please uh, know it. Yeah. To men and women. Yeah. Yep. Sure. To men and women. To men and women. You're That's right. right. Women. Exactly. Yep. That's right. Uh huh. Because the woman to uh, a woman sh- uh, um, pushing the product, when a man looks at it, it's appealing because uh-huh. it's a woman. Uh-huh. When a woman looks at another woman, though, uh, they said that the, the women look at it as it's trust thing. Uh-huh. Yes. It's yes. a trust matter. She does this. Uh-huh. She has this product or she yes. endorses this product. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to buy it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. it. Here's the last one. Uh, Noah Penifrin. Okay. This right here. Now, this is deep. This is this is uh, the images are seared in his brain. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like a branding iron. Mm-hmm. So this hormone allows men to remember the smallest of details mm-hmm. years later. Come on now. And it's seared in his memory for Come many on. years. Wow. All right. So uh, when this is, that's why men are hooked on certain things. Because for, but if you could, can, if we can take that neural transmitter and focus it on his woman. Uh-huh. Then, Which is why you have the piece that uh-huh. you can keep. Yes. For years to come. For years to come. That's the yeah, whole purpose. Make me get up yeah. And run out of yes. Here. She 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 felt some away. Oh, if she, she's a runner, she she run. Run. Uh-huh. I will uh-huh. try to run do a little shout. She runs. But that's uh-huh. the whole point yes. right here. Mm-hmm. You have this piece now mm-hmm. that you can take with you, mm-hmm. no matter where you all move to or go. See. It's there forever. See, and there's a movie, Tyler Perry, I think it's called Temptation. Mm-hmm. All right? mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all ever seen it, but yes. that movie right there was both uh, enlightening, but also freaked me out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, because here's a new married couple. They're mm-hmm. young. They're having sex every every other day. Okay. Mm-hmm. They appear to be happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're going through the rituals. Mm-hmm. In his mind, he happy. I'm getting some every day. My right. wife, man, she's beautiful. And she's like, okay, yeah, here we go again. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. She went to work, and here's just this good-looking rich man, on and on. <clears throat> when he shows up to her office, he is talking to her heart. Oh God! Yes. And he says, "Do that again." She's like, "What? You, that thing you just did? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about?" He says, "When you laugh, the left side of your cheek." Mm-hmm. Does this bullet to and, the heart? Yeah, uh huh. Bullet and and and, and in the back of your neck does this, and she like stop, stop. And you know what she did? She went home to her husband and tried to see. And she if he said, <laughs> "Come on, the same you already know it. Thing. You Dead. already know it. You already Dead. know it. Oh my God! You see what I'm saying? That was a bullet. That yes. was a bullet. That was. You see? So if we could channel these neural transmitters to our husbands or our wives, That's it. so so that, that those images can Stay be right seared there. into him. Mm-hmm. That's why marriages last for fifty, sixty years because mm-hmm. he'll say. 
I'm more in love with my wife today than mm. I was 30, 40, 50 years ago. And that's that ago. last empower that yes. your guest was, mm-hmm. your um, caller was talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. That's that 20 years, 30 yes. years, 70 now. years, 70 yes. years from now. That's, mm-hmm. that's what he's that's talking what, about. That's what Paul uh, was saying, my cousin. He, and now he brought up the agape, okay? And, that, and he's, he's, he's right about the God part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have the ability to have that. Having just a rose love, yes, it's it's just a bunch of sex around the house. Mm-hmm. And after the, after the climax, uh-huh. you ain't got what nothing. You, have, right? yeah. you got nothing. Okay, yeah. the thrill is gone, yeah. baby. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. all right. So you got uh, phileo mixed with agape. Okay. I mix with arrows. It's a wonderful ingredient Man. for a manifestation of you the Holy can't. Spirit. <laughs> Look, he, and that's is the and that's the now? Holy Spirit for real. <laughs> yes, is he a now say, on Thursday? Listen, <laughs> people are gonna say, "Well, no, that ain't the, that ain't God." That's yes, so God. Yeah. You don't even know. That's why the, the, the heart says, of study. your mm-hmm. listen. <laughs> everybody in your life is gonna be happy if you get some arrows agape love yes, in your house. Everybody, everybody you're listen. Right. Everybody. Your kids are going to be happy. Your kids are going to be happy. Because they're going to be like, know. Mama, can we? They're yeah. going to be like, go. Go. <laughs> you can have whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And your, ki- your kids need y'all to yes. be happy. They, they don't, do. yes. don't want to know what y'all doing. So no. please don't be loud yeah. or don't do it when they're right. awake or whatever. Right. But right. your kids are going to be happy mm-hmm. because they see mom and dad. Mm-hmm. What's this little pension? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This little looking at each other. Mm-hmm. This little, The kids kids need to yes, see that. We do. don't. We don't. Babies don't see enough of that. So when we grow up, we're looking for relationships like the relationship that we saw that are brother and sister sister basically living together Mm -hmm. i don't want to be living i don't want my husband and me to be brother and sister and oh we're just raising the kids that's that's not how it's supposed to be y'all supposed to pinch each other Mm -hmm. you're supposed to be sitting in church every now and then she get up to give the offering you're supposed to be looking yeah it's okay that's your wife Mm -hmm. that's your wife that's what it's that's that's what you're supposed to have that's why you be looking at the clock when the preacher up there too long we got to go right (laughs) I didn't right. say that. I love All my right. pastor. I, I like don't pastor. wait for him to be All done. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. Whatever. Yeah, well, we right. got to that. I don't wait for my pastor to be done. Okay. All right. We'll make this announcement. The last one, uh, Joe Hill says, uh, the essence of Eros is um, newness. He's saying unfamiliarity, spontaneity, mm. anticipation, using all these wonderful words. Uh, the, the problem many of us have in marriage is that these same elements m- mature and become familiar. Mm-hmm. Familiar is safe and mm-hmm. comfortable, but it is not exciting, he's saying. Mm-hmm. It takes work and creativity yes. to keep arrows in a long-term relationship. Yes. So he's right. Yes. Uh, I know couples who have to say, who have to put a, make a date to have sex on Tuesday night mm-hmm. because they're very busy mm-hmm. with children and work and what have you. So Tuesday night, that's sex light. All right. Now some say that's silly. Well, oh, they're not having sex at all. Right. So you got to do something. Yeah. Right. And, and so the, the ones who are not married says that's ridiculous. You don't even need it because you're not no, married. You so married. you don't understand you're how important married. that is oh. as, as, to both parties. All right. Uh, so they have to they have to do something to keep that yes oneness yes mm-hmm. and, and 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 try different things meaning you don't you don't have to do it in the bedroom all the time I was gonna say that you don't no. have to do the same thing no. scare him when he comes home come on now <laughs> freak him out in a black scare mask him. scare him I, I'm just saying you don't have to be sitting you know candlelit jazz playing I love scare it scare that brother when he comes scare in the come home let him ha- scare him have a mask soul. on when he comes home and and fire <laughs> breathing from somewhere just say Mufasa <laughs> do you know what I'm saying Ooh. say it again Mufasa <laughs> 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 he knows Tuesday is the night, but he don't know what he's he going to come home right. He he driving Stop down it. after you seven me? like I got to go. It's Tuesday. He's nervous. She got yeah. something. <laughs> Wait, he's like me. He's like she might hurt me this time, but you know, <laughs> you can keep she that. Gonna hurt my feelings, right? <laughs> no, she's gonna hurt my back. But every <laughs> Tuesday, every it Tuesday happens. it happens. Every, every happens. Tuesday, yes, it happens. and you got to keep it up. Yes. You got to keep it up. But do something that we got to do it. Yes, gotcha. and long lasting. Give us that date again. And where are we going again? We're going to the Little Black Pearl. Mm-hmm. Somebody, somebody please give me the address. Yeah, right. it, it's this know. Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday. Oh my God, that's so Thursday. close. Thursday. Come, next, yeah. thir- three days They're no sleep. They're going to have a baby sitting something. there at the door. Next, next, <laughs> next <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Today is Friday, by the way. Right. And so Today is Friday. It's going to be next Thursday, there you go. October 29th, mm-hmm. 2015. Mm-hmm. 7.30 p.m.? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 yep, p.m.? Yep, 11. To 11.30 p.m.? 11. All your senses are going to be we're going to tantalize all your senses oh boy. the sights smells 
um, you're going to hear things. You're going to see things. I want all those you. those neural yes, transmitters. Trans- we want all those. Are be- yes. We want to, we want, we want to mess with you. We want to mess with your sense, senses. It's a great date night. So if you got that one that you're oh, thinking yes. about, please bring them. Bring them and Just tell them. might bring the date. Bring the date. Hope this she is the won't night. be late. Thursday night at eight. <laughs> <laughs> this is the night. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. It's going to be an amazing night. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm excited. excited. Yeah. Well, that's, I think we're all excited about that. Uh, so go there. Um, Brittany, we're going to go ahead and do our outro here. A uh, song called If by um, Bread. That's the name of a group. Back in 1971, y'all, okay, y'all weren't even around. Play right? some average <laughs> white band, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this, is, this is one of the greatest songs, I think, ever written in the 1970s, okay? okay. It's mine, so let me, have a, let me have this one, right? Okay. You can have it. Brandy, thank you so much. Thank you. What a wonderful a guest. Yeah. You got to come back. Please do oh, that. Oh, absolutely. Because we talk about this stuff all the time. Fun. Yeah, all right. I thank you. Fun. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna tag it tonight and sh- shoot it to you and share it to everybody. Wonderful. All right. Thank Waukesha. So yes, sir. Girl, <laughs> you me. know you send me. That's my sis. That's that girl right there. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and um, uh, you've got your photographer here. Lisa, she, Lisa's actually one of my spokesmen. She's, she's not my photographer. Spokesman? She's okay. a sweetie. She came out today, but she she's one of my spokesmen. She is a well. sweet lady. Say hello in the mic. Say hi. She, she was the first one. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Her <laughs> mic wasn't on. Brittany, turn this mic on. Right? Okay. Now you got to say it again. I said hi. I was the first one. Oh, you first. She was the spokesman that I had when I had. I did not know what I was doing. Yeah. Oh. She brought me out of my she, shell. I was wow. afraid, nervous. Yeah. She Wow. Arrow steel. Yes. She, she, she transformed. Yeah. She took she a transformed. took a spear and it put it right in. My <laughs> self esteem as well. That's wonderful. Oh, I think that's what that does as well. People for, love it. for most people, it's something yeah. different for each yeah. one of us. Right. It love is, it. and it made me strong. It made me brave. Stop. So Stop it, did, it. Right. Stop. It did all of that. Wow. Me. I don't have a husband, so it yeah. did something totally different. Did something. To, yes. Mm-hmm. See what you did. Right here. Brandon, you always starting problems. You always. You're just a problem. <laughs> She You're is a fire star. She is amazing. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be great. Looking forward to it. Uh, you already got a couple of people says hook me up. I think Michelle Thomas and um, they. And, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah Michelle says yeah. we'll to all of you guys. Mm-hmm. So let's do that, y'all. Let's make this a success. Uh, and y'all, y'all come on back and be on my show. Let's talk about some stuff. Right? Absolutely. Educate the folks. Well, All right, thank y'all. You. You're welcome. Go to Spreaker.com. Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And the show will be back up on the wall. And you'll hear it in its fullness and share it with everybody. Okay? Hey. Spell it, share it with your pastors because they might Please. need it. <laughs> they need it. <laughs> the day in two beds. All right, oh, y'all. Oh, no. Jesus, Gotta oh, no. go. All right. So on the show. show. <laughs>
I'd spend the end with you And when the world was through Then one by one The stars would all go round Then you and I Would simply fly You have been listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show, where Sir Walter Jones provides you with a biblical perspective on everyday life. Stay connected to Sir Walter Jones at his website, www.sirwalterjones.com. Search The Sir Walter Jones Show on Facebook or follow on Twitter at Sir Walter's Music. Until next time, thank you for listening to The Sir Walter Jones Show with Sir Walter Jones.